I'm saying it might even run out just in the course of the conversation I met. Well, let's have a quick meeting. Encourage everybody to. Questions for the manager on his recommendation? Okay. Um, earlier today, uh, the chair of the school board reached out to me um, asking to come forward tonight to clarify um, some things. Um, at our meeting on the 8th, we had um, uh, the director of facilities come forward to answer some questions. I think that there was um, some confusion from some of his answers, uh, and, and the chair of the school board was looking to clarify some of those statements that were made. So, um, I'm going to invite um, Elizabeth Cypress, school board chair, to come forward. Um, she also provided a reference. Uh,
what's going on. And so it's been a very collaborative effort looking at the needs of this district, going back to the CIP plan, but also there are some things that didn't make it onto the CIP plan, and there are other things that maybe are definite priorities. If you look, if you look at the top, Tom from the middle school, there's a standby generator to cover the entire facility. That was on the capital improvement plan. I know, I don't know everything that's on this new list. There's a newer list than March 27th. But I know that that did get moved because it's a rather large item and there are other priorities that, that took its place. So it's, it's been a very collaborative effort. And, um, and um, there has been no board level discussion about defraying CIP items or, or moving them with the intent of specifically coming for a bond. Um, that could at some point down the road be a discussion, but it's never been a specific discussion at this point. And none of the, the, the roofing or those sort of really important projects have been deferred. So I just wanted to make sure that we were clear about that. And um, <coughs> if the town council would like, my understanding is that the Buildings and Grounds Committee has completed the list of what will be done given that budget that is in you know that portion of the budget and I'd be happy to share that with the town council so you would know exactly what was going into the CIP for the next year. So that's all I've got for you. Are there any questions? Any questions for Elizabeth? Oh question. that's all right. Yes. Um, you mentioned that the CIP bond is not this has not been discussed by the school board, but yet it is in the school board budget that we budget booklets that we received um, under the facilities. It says bonded, bonded, or bond, or to be bonded, or something and so forth. So um, I'm talking about. I, I heard the director of facilities make reference to some different bonds that I wasn't aware of. So I guess that's what I'm clarifying. We have already come to the town council and we have a current bond, that's my understanding. Um, we don't have we don't have plans in the works at this time to go out to bond at one time unless So I'm still confused. I mean okay. on your facilities um, tab in your budget booklet. Um, on page three of three, two or three, three of three. May I grab my, I brought my book? Yes, yes, please do. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to be oh. trying to. Oh. Okay. Um, there's multiple things. In the pink. Uh, in the pink, yes, pink. Okay. Yes, it says bond, bond, and so. Yeah, and then those are some. Pretty I'm numbers, yeah. The, the facilities director may have identified those as possible bonding projects, but they haven't risen to the board level as bonding projects. Oh, okay, thank you. Any other questions for board chair? Thank you. Thanks. I know that that was. Um, somewhat out of order on the agenda since the school board item is the second, but I wanted to just bring that forward so that in the context of all of the discussion we'll have, um, sort of have the most comprehensive information we could. Other discussion? Any other discussion on 75-2017, the municipal portion of the budget? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the municipal budget for fiscal 2018 as uh, amended, including the $48,000 reduction to account 600. Next up is number 76-2017, the school board budget approval. Councilor Sullivan, do you want to make a motion? Twenty-four million eight hundred seventy-nine thousand fourteen dollars. Well, then I move that we appropriate twenty-four Second. Second. Councilor Wright. Discussion. Councilor Gardner. Sure. Um, so I know that you spend a lot of time, Jessica, uh, working on uh, preparing a lot of really great information, um, the spreadsheets, the formulas, um, and which really base what we're looking at. You know, I thought we had conceptually put that out there as a possibility, but I thought that during the workshop we had agreed that as a council member, certainly people can make a motion at any time um, that we would be going forth with the original number from uh, the school board. Um, so knowing the realities that we put in front of us, knowing the facts, I still feel that I will, would like to support, so I'm voting against that, the original um, school board approved budget of 24 million eight seventy nine fourteen. I feel that um, we as a community vote and approve school board members to look at the school budget and to spend the countless hours and months to sift through that information and to work at looking at all the mandates uh, funding that has to be done and what we want and all the pressure comes in. And then to look at what the district leaders can work with them to come up with something that's viable. I feel that people in Gables have moved to Gables with, um, particularly for our schools. We might stay here because we have, we already love it, um, but they move here and it's our school and our successful, incredibly uh, 
solid excellent schools that attract people to ski and at the same time lose all our property values. So I feel like the school board did an excellent job of outlining uh, what the needs are um, and weighing that with the cost and came forth what they feel is a reasonable um, increase. Um, that is really not even truly out of line from past um, years. I know we put together a scenario of a 17 year um, history um, with you know trajectory from you know lower, you know, left hand, upper right, and we have not increased. We we have annually every year increased. And, and that's a trend where I how do we do this? I'm not sure we're ever gonna get all of us. Um, so I still feel like this community, and I heard we heard from a lot of people today, and I realize there's a lot of people who feel like they would like to see this um, our, our budget lowered by um, you know what I feel is kind of an arbitrary amount just to say that we can lower it. I would prefer to defer to what our school board and those elected people have um, really put forth. So I'm going to vote uh, against that motion and hoping that we can come back around to the original proposal now. Councilor Gordon? Um, I agree with just about everything that Councilor Gordon has said. Um, I felt that when we addressed this at a workshop and thought that we agreed um, in an ongoing manner that we were going to move forward with the proposed budget from the school board. Um, I've heard from lots of people that the budget keeps going up and the budget keeps going up, and so I asked um, our town manager, Matthew, to give me the numbers for our surrounding communities because people are saying that they can't stay here because they are going to have to move out of the gate. So if you move to South Portland, their school budget is looking at a 4.59% increase this year. You go to Portland, they're at a 2.75% increase. Scarborough is at a 4.96% increase just for their school budget. Then I asked them to also look at some of the communities that we compare ourselves with on other things, like Yarmouth. They're at a 5.05% school budget increase, found a five a seven percent increase. So it's not just us. And I think the school board did a great job to keep the budget up what they did. And they didn't get everything they wanted. So you know they obviously had to make sacrifices and they were we did this in a conscious effort to keep their budget down. So I as well will be voting against this I support the budget as well as the Okay, other discussion? I'll go next. Um, That's all right. And I will take a little bit longer than others. Um, I wrote myself some notes, and I also um, thought that I had some uh, numbers in there that were sometimes you know, we talk about numbers and they just get a little bit too much. But um, what I will say is this is my 14th year reviewing the school budget. I would suggest that maybe I've done more than anybody else in the room. Um, I review the budget line by line, and with my financial background, I feel I have a good grasp on how the budget is developed. And I listen to what the needs are. I'll talk about some, um, some numbers. Class size. In December of 2015, the school board changed the class size policy to reflect lower class sizes across all classes, thereby allowing the same staffing numbers for lower total student population. Reduction in school population. In 2001, the student population of Cape Elizabeth was 1,736 students, with a budget of $13,617,956. There was a peak enrollment in 2006 for 1,847 students with a budget of 17,554,234. The proposed school board enrollment for 2018 is 1,571 students with a budget of $24,879,014. Since 2001, there has been a reduction of 165 students at the same time, staffing has increased by 11.51 staff. I'm not sure what 51 is, but I'd say half. In 2001, the price expended per student was $7,844. In 
The proposed price expended per student for 2018 is $15,836, which is more than double. The special ed population, which was talked about significantly um, at our workshop, is approximately 10% of the total student population, which is lower than surrounding communities, according to the school department. At the Town Council School Board Workshop, the town was asked to reduce the proposed, their proposed budget by 1%, which the town has done. It was proposed that the school board do the same, which was not supported. The original superintendent's proposed budget at the first school board workshop, their workshop, was $24,682,000. $945, an increase over the current year of $395,400. The school board's proposed budget is $24,879,014, an increase of $591,469. Initially, the school board's budget was $25,000,000, $1,623, an increase of $714,078, which was mitigated by a $122,609 decrease in health insurance costs. Since 2003, the percentage, the percent of salaries and benefits compared to the total school budget has gone from 77.57% to 83.11%. This upward creep has left less money for other school needs. Although most of the school staff has negotiated contracts, the total number of employees is up to the superintendent. So in re referring back to the salaries and benefits, which was a great concern to me. Um, you look at 2003, you look at 2008, you look at 2017, and you look at 2018. And the amount of the school budget is creeping up on salaries and benefits. This leaves very left, they're very left for other things. Um, this year, we talked, we heard tonight about the CIP cut, which again concerns me because we're talking about the maintenance of our school facilities. And it was discussed that we would continue to maintain school facilities and we would have a CIP budget that covered that. Um, and again, we heard tonight that there was a bonding issue that was not discussed by the school board, but is in our school board packets. So, I could say more, but I'm not going to. Um, I support the Cable of Schools. If I didn't, I wouldn't have given my time and energy over the last 14 years. Um, I received a huge amount of pay. I get the same increase that everybody else gets, 0% of 0 is 0. I graduated from Cape Elizabeth as well as my husband and his family. Our daughter graduated from here. Cape Elizabeth has consistently been one of the top performing schools in the state. I continue, continue to believe that the high performance is due to a partnership between the schools, the parents, and the students. At the same time, my responsibility is to the whole town, and I know that there are residents that cannot afford higher taxes regardless of the amount. This is not a bare bones budget, um, as I've outlined in the details. And just a side note, when the state uses the EPS funding formula, which we talked about before, one of the items of consideration, and I don't agree with all of what the state decides that the schools need, but one of the items of consideration is enrollment. And the reason the state reduces our funding is because of our reducing enrollment. And I will remind counselors that there have been counselors in the past, as of last year, that said that this is not um, sustainable. So I ask, if not tonight, then when? 
Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Sullivan? Yes, I, I've got some prepared comments. <clears throat> um, I certainly want to uh, commend the school board for their efforts. I know they do put a lot of time into this. Um, so we, um, and I think it's very important that it's all about healthy friction because this is all about checks and balances. Um, we are mandated by law to be the final word on the number that goes to the voters. And so I want to just mention that. Uh, this school board budget has no cut. We've got an email saying no cut budget. It's going up by over half a million dollars, so I consider that a cut. As one concerned citizen pointed out recently, it is important to make our decisions dispassionately based on facts and not emotions. As town councils, we need to remember that when we tax our citizens, they have to pay. They don't have a choice. And we must ensure that any tax increase is responsible and that all budgets have integrity. The school board proposes a $24.9 million budget for fiscal year 2018. If the, school, the proposed school budget is approved, it will be an increase of over $11 million since 2001. We should just sort of back. Sorry about that. That's an 83% budget increase, along with a 10% increase in students since 2001. From peak enrollment in 2006, we have lost 244 students and are projected to lose another 32 next year. That amounts to a budget increase of 7.3 million since 2006, or 41%, with a drop of 15% in enrollment. Salaries and benefits are increasing as a percentage of the school budget. For next year, it will increase by over $860,000 from this year and will be 83% of the entire school budget. Ten years ago, we had 177 more students than we do today. And salaries and benefits were 75% of the school budget then. It is true that that projected state subsidy of 1826000 that is 1.6 million less than in 2016, and we've heard about this from the emails we've gotten and we've heard about this from the school board, they are down 1.6 million in two years. That is true. Although the subsidy round has been up and down since 2001, it has averaged 2.5 million. Among things such as property valuation, student enrollment is a factor in what the state calculates for people with the and other districts. I do not understand why the school board would base its 2018 budget, fiscal year 2018, on the highest amount it ever received two years ago, which was two years ago, higher by over 328000 than its aid in 2009. Why base a budget on the high water mark when only once in the last 18 years did school subsidy ever come close to that? And when the 18-year historical average has been, has been $2.5 million. Why not plan on something close to the historical average, especially when enrollment continues to decline? From 2001 to 2018, we are looking at an 83% increase in school budget with a 10% increase in enrollment. The, the municipal budget has increased 68% in that time frame, with no change, virtually no change in the town's population. Again, from peak enrollment in 2006 to 2018, we are looking at a proposed 41% increase in school budget with a 15% decrease in enrollment. For those of us who own businesses, or have owned businesses as I have, would you be hiring more employees if you lost 10 to 50% of your customer base? I don't think so. Not only would you refrain from hiring staff, you might choose not to fill positions vacated by attrition or you might downsize. You would look for economies and perhaps struggle to make payroll. You would not assume that customers, that the customers you still have would be willing to pay 41% to 83% for your more for your products. I realize that the school budget and, and as well as municipal, uh, these are not businesses. But I suspect 
that, the fuel moments have had a 41% or 83% increase in our pay or our salaries or our pensions. Most of us have revenue and spending problems. We can't raise our salaries or pensions to meet this tax, these tax rate increases. So we have to cut. We have to cut something. I think that a 1% decrease in the school, the proposed school budget is extremely reasonable. It's still quite an increase. And as in the documents I prepared and sent to everyone today, and there are copies in the back and online as well, if we had a 1% decrease in the school budget, which we have already, uh, which our town manager has already accommodated in, in the municipal budget, would give us a total tax rate increase of 3.1%. And that is still above the 10-year average of 2.75%. So again, I, I'd like to echo Councillor uh, Ray's comments, if not now, when. This train needs to slow down. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Jordan? Um, I just want to say that um, as a graduate of the Kid Lulu school system, I am a supporter of um, the school system, but I'm also, um, as uh, Councillor Ray said, I'm also here for all of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, and, and I need to think about that. And this is probably one of the most difficult decisions that uh, I think uh, as a councillor we make. Um, because it's it's impacting the young people in our in our community, um, but what I um, as I thought about the budget that was put forth, and as I look at uh, what um, Councillor Sullivan is is putting forward, I do have to um, look at that as a town. It's not sustainable for us to continue to year after year after year after year just move this train forward and I think we need to step back and um, and I am in support of where Jessica put forward at this point in time. Thank you. Other discussion? Mr. Gordon? Just to uh, screw on everybody's got to talk about that Jessica proposed with the change. I'd also like to offer an amendment to number seven, order number seven. Changing the last six words of the paragraph from um, the school department shall evaluate their options instead of curb tail spending to offset and shortfall. Depending on what the shortfall is, I would rather hear back from the school department if we need some additional funding, and then to lock them into curtailing on the spending to offset any shortfall right now. If they're, they can walk away knowing that they can come back to the town council if they need to, they can curtail some shortfall if they need to, but I'd like them to have the option that if they need an extra 50000 or something, that they could at least come back and ask. So that's amending the last six words of the paragraph. Take those last six words out and change them to evaluate the options. Okay. Is there, do you need that right back then? I'm good. I have it, thank you. Okay. Is there a second to Councilor Jordan's I'll proposed second amendment? That. I would second that. Councilor Penny Jordan, discussion on the amendment. It's on the floor. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's um, it being be an important opportunity to at least give um, with the school board an opportunity to investigate ways to adjust settings if it were to come in, you know, who knows what the numbers would be, and then come back to the council and propose a scenario um, for potentially giving us the opportunity to potentially supplement if they did or we say no. So I would support that. Other discussion? Uh, the discussion on the amendment. Um, I'm, Councilor Jordan, I'm, I'm kind of confused in that I, I, I find the amendment 
the wording is meant to be vague and open-ended, and so um, I guess a bit uncomfortable with um, with that aspect of it. I, I I understand what you're trying to get to in terms of um, you know allowing the council the discretion to um, you know, potentially plug holes in the budget, but it. it it just feels to me the wording is a bit vague and open ended. I don't know, I don't know if others have comments to that effect. Council? Yeah. Um, I, um, I, I don't object to your intent, but what I'm thinking is um, if you let the wording the way it is, it doesn't prevent the school board from approaching the council should there be a need. I wouldn't think. I mean, I read it as you shall. So they put out to curtail their spending. It's also in short, so they're saying they have to. But they shall to May. You just change the word shall to May with that. Yes, if you shall, I'm not sure. There's no option. That's why I was trying to think of a way, I mean, evaluate their options. That's their options. They can curtail just within their budget. They can come back to the, I mean, they only have so many options, really. Okay. Yeah. If, it, if you change the word shall to may, I think that accomplishes what you're intending. What, what it's not, because it's not a shall or not. I think it may. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, I think that would be quite the flexibility that she could come back. That's all I want to say. She could come back. Then, I make my amendment to be. Okay, other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment to change uh, Clause 7 to read the school, the school department may curtail spending to offset any shortfall. All those in favor of the amendment. Okay. So we return to the main motion on the floor. It is the proposed allocation of $24,660,350 reflecting a 1% decrease from what is shown here on the agenda. Is there any discussion on that? Um, I'll offer some comments. I first wanted to um, go out of my way to thank uh, all those who attended the public hearing last week and spoke uh, their various opinions uh, relating to the budget, and all those who took the time to email the council, um, of which we received many emails on this topic. Um, I'm particularly appreciative of the town's continued engagement on this matter. It's by, you know, I think everybody's estimation the single most important thing that we do, considering it's the single biggest, um, you know, allocation of of, uh, of your tax dollars, and ultimately at the end of the day, we're here to be good stewards of, of everybody's tax dollars, and, and so appreciate everybody's um, interest and engagement in the issue. I also want to thank the the school board and the superintendent and um, Catherine Mesmer and all the rest of the staff for what ultimately is hours upon hours, and Matt as well, um, hours upon hours of work and time and energy that they put into this. Um, it's, uh, I think, often um, is, uh, is underappreciated and it shouldn't be. Uh, it's a ton of work that these folks do uh, on behalf of, of certainly us as counselors to have the most in, uh, uh, informed um, set of data to look at, and, and also on behalf of the members of the town the community. So thank you all for that. Um, Jessica, I also want to thank you for um, what I thought was fantastic leadership for the Finance Council, uh, or the Finance Committee rather, uh, and um, uh, uh, a high level of engagement in, in all of the workshops, uh, participation in meetings, with members of the school board and the business manager. Uh, really appreciate the, uh, the time that you put into it. Thank you very much for that. Um, regarding some of the uh, numbers that were discussed earlier, part of the comments, um, 
you know, numbers are a funny thing, like Kathy said, there's a lot of different ways to look at them. Um, and you can take different numbers, um, you know, certainly to, to make your case in a number of different ways. I think at the end of the day, um, everybody up here, um, you know, wants what's best for the community. Uh, I, I don't question that at all. Um, but I, I, I think that there's, uh, depending on you know how you look at different numbers, there's, there's different stories that are told. Um, there's no questioning that the, the spending has gone up. There's no debating that fact, whether it be on the municipal side or the school side. There's no, no question the spending going up. Um, but when I sat in the different budget meetings um, and went through the both the municipal budget and the school budget line by line, like it, like I hope everybody else did. Um, I didn't see, uh, you know, lavish items being asked for. Um, I didn't see extravagance, um, you know, beyond uh, what I heard articulated as very strong cases for the needs of the students in the schools and the needs of, uh, on, the, on the municipal side, the needs of this, the community. Um, I think, you know, the cost of delivering services has changed dramatically over, you know, the 10 years that CAP decided from 2006 to 2016, which is that 10 years. You know, that's a, that's a big increase, but, but the cost of the service that we deliver has changed dramatically in that time. Um, I heard 77% salary and benefits versus 83 plus percent salary and benefits. But the composition of those staff have changed during that time. Um, and when I think back to the August 25th workshop and discussion of, for example, just one example, adding ed techs, um, that relative to peer communities were really just bringing us up to, up to this, the, the recommended level, not, not even an excess level, but the recommended level. Um, you know, those are, those are headcount that add to that 11 plus staff, 11.51 staff over the course of time that Kathy mentioned. Going to full day kindergarten adds to that staff. Like, you know, the composition of the staff and faculty and, and support staff that we have has changed dramatically. And that coupled with the, the, the cost of delivering those services, um, you know, is a, is a big factor now. Um, I heard reference to the per student spending. Um, even at the numbers that we're talking about, and this is these these next two things I'm going to say really drive to the the, the point that I want to make is um, the per per pupil spending is still below almost all of the towns that we measure ourselves and compare ourselves against in, in the area. Um, so yes, it's increased, but so is everybody else's. It, I mean, you know. We talk about a runaway train, but there's there's a lot of there's a lot of trains on a lot of tracks, I guess. But um, the point that Caitlin made about the you know the amount that taxes are going up in other communities, um, I don't see us as an outlier in that. We're all in a tough situation. We're we're all in a situation where we'd love to have more revenue, right? That would make this an easy problem, um, but we don't. Um, now the last point I'll make is, is uh, regarding something that Jessica said, which I, I thought was interesting. Uh, that if this was a business and you were charging, I think the point you were making was if you were charging your customers more for the service, you know, would those customers turn away? We haven't seen our customers turn away. At, at you know, in, at, in the last several Junes, when they've gone to the the ballot box to ratify the budget that's put before them, it's been, it's been approved and, and in most cases by strong margins. Um, I think that's the interesting and compelling point to be made here is that at least on the school board portion of the budget, the voters have the chance to, to make their voice heard. Um, we heard in the meeting that we had last week during the public comment period that there's more people that are families in town that don't have students than those that do, and there was, I think somebody was making a point about whether or not the schools benefit everybody in the community, and I'm not going to open up that can of worms, but, but all of those people also have the opportunity to come to the, to the, um, to the voting booths on, on June 13th um, to make their voice heard. If, if, those, if those folks decide and you know, indicate that they don't 
uh, want to approve the budget and um, or you know in the non-binding question indicate what their their sentiment is towards it then that'll be I think a strong indicator for us but to, to date those customers haven't turned away um, and um, so you know for those reasons I'm going to vote against um, the proposed decrease I, I made the point during the workshop that I think while I understand the intention of the of, of the, the measure, um, I think that the the one percent de decrease is a little bit arbitrary. I think it's also a little bit disingenuous to say that um, you know the municipal side of the house sort of magnanimously um, made this massive reduction because number one, it, it wasn't in the in the scheme of things as much um, that needed to be reduced, obviously, as a percentage of the overall budget to get to that. But number two, there were some things, I think, that were sort of already low-hanging fruit that we all agreed that whether there was an ask for the 1% reduction or not just made sense to do. And so um, I, 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 I don't think it's entirely, um, it doesn't pass the entire straight face test for me to say, well, here the town bent over backwards to get to that 1% and, and the school didn't. But um, so anyway, um, I'm going to vote against the measure to reduce. Um, I can also count and uh, see that that leaves us, um, unless somebody plans to change their um, uh, the way that they were leaning. Um, I can see that that leaves us at three three. But um, if there's no further discussion, I'll call the question. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion on the floor to uh, allocate. Budget amount of twenty four million six hundred sixty thousand three hundred fifty dollars. All those in favor? Opposed? So we're deadlocked. Um, and then in the event of a tie vote on the motion, the motion uh, the, the vote of the item or the motion doesn't carry, so the motion is lost. We got a tie vote. Okay. Council Wright? I'd like to make a motion um, to approve a school budget based on the superintendent's original budget of March 7, 2017 of $24,682,945. I second that. Please repeat the amount, Kathy. Yes, $24,682,945. Thank you. This is a higher number than the yep. 1%. Yep, thank you. Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Jordan. Is there any discussion? Councillor Jordan. I make amendments to our 7 to change the word shadow to May. Is there a second for that amendment? For what? To the same thing we did for the first one. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Councillor Jordan, yeah. any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, back to the original motion, um, the $24,682,945 representing the figure from the superintendent's original budget submitted on May, uh, March 7th, I think it was the date. Other discussion? Jessica? Um, yes. Uh, I attended that initial uh, school board budget meeting with the superintendent uh, last month, and I think it was a
looking at the school budget for a number of years, there's, um, in my opinion, there's a tendency for, for folks to get um, emotionally charged up about the budget. Um, and I understand that. I have a child, and a lot of people do have children. And it's not hard to get concerned, especially if we hear some sound bites that, oh my gosh, if we don't get all the money we need, um, the children are going to suffer. I have not found that to be the case so far. Um, I, as I mentioned before, I think that the, the school is a partnership and it's um, parents expecting a lot from their children, children expecting a lot, and staff um, expecting a lot and providing a lot. Um, this number is higher than the CPIU, it's higher than the cost of living, it's higher than the Social Security increase. Um, so again, we're talking about folks in town that are going to struggle to um, even keep up with this number. Um, but I, I, uh, I, I will support it. I'd like it to be lower. I think I said that once. I'll say it again. Um, but I realize that there are counselors that have differing opinions. And I'm hoping that we can come up with something that at least four of us can agree upon. It would be nice if it was six. Um, so I'll stop there. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor. I mean, really this is us trying to decide some dollars to the original question, so I'm not really, when we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm not really seeing this because I'm seeing this budget proposal we're seeing on the same time, so I'll still be doing it against this. Other discussion? Seeing none? All those in favor of the motion on the floor to uh, allocate a budget of $24,682,945 for a school budget for fiscal 18. All those opposed? No further along. <clears throat> Councilor Jordan. I make a motion to approve item 76 2017 school budget approval. I have written for $24,879,014. Also changing order number seven, last sentence, and saying school department shall curtail the school department may curtail. Is there a second? I'll say that. Discussion. Um, I would just point out that the two things. Um, I don't know if it was being rounded up on what was circulated to us with the with the three different scenarios here from 3.9 or 3.8, but um, either one of those is a total tax increase less than um, fiscal 17. Uh, which was 3.91, so even at 3.9, we're effectively flat to last year. Um, and I'm also reminded, um, I believe, well, I better check that before, before I make that statement. Hold on. In just a second. I, I, the um, proposed expenditures on the school side are, just reminding everybody, less than they were um, for, for fiscal 17 as well. So um, I understand and appreciate the overall concern about um, 
the general trend and on average here, but I think on a year-over-year comparison from fiscal 17 to fiscal 18, I don't know that a more reasonable effort could have been made in this case, um, particularly, again, calling back to the needs that I heard um, expressed um, and articulated as, as uh, critical to um, uh, to delivering the, the quality of education that, that is expected in this town. Um, you know, to see, to see ultimately numbers that come in under last year's uh, tax increase and based on expenditures on the school side that are less than the previous years, um, to me represents more than a good faith effort um, to be cognizant of the um, uh, fiduciary responsibility that we have to be good stewards of the taxpayers' money. So, <coughs> other discussion? Jessica? Uh, when you are saying that the school department is spending less than in fiscal 2017, I'm, I'm not sure how you're making that conclusion. Your, your budget for 2017 is 24 million two hundred and eighty-seven thousand. The percent increase in their expenditures is what I was referring to. 2.4% versus, I think, 3.2 from 16-17. Thank you for clarifying that. Mr. Chairman, this would be helpful also to the Council's discussion. Uh, while we were discussing that, initiated the changes from the earlier part of the $48,000 reduction on the municipal side. Uh, and when you had that reduction taking place from the 600 account, that takes the total uh, impact on the tax rate from the 3.88, or let's say rounded up to 3.9% to 3.71%. So the town side of that, uh, you know, it's all, it's all comes down to being one final number, but the town side, instead of being, it was at 1.1% uh, to the town, but so seven tenths of 1% increase. Uh, the revenue part stayed the same, but ultimately the bottom line impact was the town's uh, impact on the tax rate is going up to nine tenths of 1%, uh, but overall you're looking at a net change of 3.71%. Uh, so this, uh, as opposed to earlier, uh, before that change was made at 3.9 or 3.88%. So we picked up. The actions earlier tonight you picked up with the deduction there. Yeah, the other point I'd actually like to point out, um, um, number seven, we were, we were talking about the um, clause seven and the language around um, if there's a short, further shortfall. Um, what we haven't focused on as much on that item is the language in there um, that is different from what the school board had proposed around the uh, in the event of uh, excess funds being received from the state, um, and what to do with those those dollars should should they be uh, realized? Um, so the school board, I think, had proposed um, uh, returning 50% of any excess funds to the unassigned fund balance, and the 50% remaining to um, uh, reduce um, tax burden. Um, I think with uh, the measure here. Um, to be 100%, uh, that's, I think, a good faith um, sort of expression um, to recognize uh, the needs as requested, but also understand that, um, you know, any, anything over and above that will go immediately to addressing the, you know, the problem that we've all identified of, of um, the taxpayers having to shoulder the burden, um, you know, for any increase like this. So, um, in any case, I, I, we hadn't really discussed that tonight, and I thought I'd bring that up as well. So, other discussion. I believe that has been the standard in practice, anyway. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that it was different from what had been proposed by the school board. So. 
Councillor Ray. Um, it's happened in the past, but very seldom. Um, and if they do, those are just small dollars. Those are baby dollars compared to what we're talking about, not millions. So I just wanted to do that. Just as a helpful point as well, Mr. Chairman, it would be helpful. Uh, speaking with Superintendent Coulter and the uh, business manager, Catherine Mesmer, today. Um, Unfortunately, the vote was not taking place in town by the time we know anything. Uh, and hopefully, it'll be, we'll, we will know what that number is before the start of the fiscal year, but there's a good chance it may be the start of July before we end up knowing exactly what that amount is. Be. Everyone's optimistic that it would be a greater number than what was originally anticipated. But until the legislature finally swings the hammer and closes the session, we know this is the no number at this point in time, so. I have a question for you. So, we need to come to some agreement tonight because this needs to go, we have 30 days it has to be beforehand, so we can't table this for a week. No. And try to get the seven, the crew back in. I'm sure you know the outcome. No. Okay. We don't have to talk to them. <laughs> yeah, we, we do have absentee ballot requests that have been received already. Yeah. Other discussions? Um, Kathy, I appreciate your point on the likelihood of additional funds. Uh, you know, um, thank you for pointing that out. Um, other discussion? Okay, uh, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion on the floor that we allocate, uh, lost track of it here, hold on. What's the total? $24,879, uh, eight, $24,879,014 as presented in the agenda today uh, with the uh, Alteration to Clause 7 of May curtail spending to offset any shortfall. All those in favor? Opposed? So we'll keep at it. Now, Sullivan. Yeah, yeah, Please. I move that we uh, approve a school budget in the amount. And this is the budget originally proposed by Superintendent of $24,682,945. Uh, and that we amend number seven, which uh, we amend number seven uh, to return it to the original uh, language of 50 goes for taxpayer relief and 50% to the, to the school budget. Is there a second? A second. Council Wright. A second? Yep. The reason I return to that uh, is that, um, again, when I attended that meeting, I thought that that was a reasonable budget. Um, and I thought perhaps I, I could support it. And um, when we had a kind of workshop and we were even considering a 1% change to the school budget, uh, the school superintendent did say he could work with that and that he would make it work. Um, and then several counselors took the opposite direction on that, but he did say that, and I, I have uh, full confidence that he would do that very well. Um, it's still an increase of over $300,000 from fiscal year 17. 
Other discussion? Councilor Jordan? I understand that the uh, superintendent said so they can make it work because he pointed out that for all adults in the past, it's cold and that's what he has to do. Obviously, it wouldn't be, you know, what he wants to do, but it's have to do if that's all it goes. And as Councilor Ray just pointed out, if we get any extra money, those are baby dollars. It's not going to make up for the 200000 plus that we're proposing to cut out of the budget right now. Where they're going to get baby dollars, and, and that this proposal will get 50% of those baby dollars, so we'll get newborn baby dollars. <laughs> Sorry. But I've got to keep it going and keep it light. Basically, right now, we're doing, we're like working as if we don't have a, a vote coming up. We need to just send the budget to the people. And if they say that the budget's too high, then we can come back and we can go back and forth on picking numbers. Or maybe they'll say the budget's too low and we can give them more money. But we're, we're, we're acting before we even hear from the people. That's why we have these, you know, these votes to approve the school budget so that the people can vote and we can get direction from them. <coughs>
and said, well, this is only the cost of taking your family out to dinner a couple of times. There are people in town who can't take their family out to dinner. There are people in town who are maybe single parents who have a couple of children and they need to put braces on their child's teeth. And that's five to six thousand dollars, I remember. Um, and the thought of people having to make decisions about paying their taxes or buying groceries or something that is very important like heating oil or electricity. Um, I think that we have to keep that in, I think we have to keep that in mind. Um, as I said before, and I'll say it again, um, even if we do not give the schools everything they're asking for, they are not going to be hurting. The students are still going to be getting a good education. Um, I do not believe that this is going to hurt them the way some other folks think it is. And I would also suggest that um, well, I'll say that the first year I was on the school board, the school board's, the superintendent's proposed budget was an 11% increase. I voted against it. I was severely um, um, chastised for not being a supporter of the schools. It was too high. And there were other people in town that knew it was too high. There were other times when I was on the school board and I voted against the superintendent's budget. Um, I would say that I'm moderately conservative. Some might think I'm very conservative, but I'm actually not. But I know that um, sometimes when you're talking about the school budget, um, folks that have a direct interest in their children, um, because they have children in the schools, I think some, sometimes have somewhat of conflicted interest. And I'll just put that out there. Um, I had a child in school. Um, fortunately and unfortunately, I, I do when I say what I think. Um, and um, right or wrong, um, I'm, pretty, um, I'm pretty direct. And I think everybody knows that. So I'll just put that out there. Other discussion? And I will be supporting um, Jessica's most recent, again, higher than I want, um, but I will be supporting her motion. Councilor? Yeah, I would like to uh, uh, say again that there is a system of checks and balances. It's the way it's set up by law, by state law. Um, I recall in 2008, I believe it was, um, at the height of the Great Recession, and I think that was the first year that the, the school budget went to the voters. If I maybe wrong, I think it was the first or the second year after that change took place uh, with the legislature. The, so anyway, at the height of the Great Recession, the school, the school budget proposed was 13%. And it went back and forth in the town several times, and it ended up five, it was five. Point three percent, I believe. So there was a very glaring example of the importance of checks and balances. I'd also like to to say that yes, you know, uh, I understand Chairman uh, Garland's point about it being a smaller increase than last year, but I think yeah, it's very important to look at the history. And every single tax rate increase is an exponential increase. The increase, excuse me, an exponential increase over the year before. So the number just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's just not a one-time thing. It's three percent of a bigger number of a bigger number every year. Um, so I'm hoping that council will support the superintendent's budget with the 50-50 amendment. Other discussion? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To the point you just made, John Sullivan, I think that uh, the example that you gave of whether it was, I'm guessing it was fiscal 20, 2009 based on the history we're seeing here, because it was a total municipal, total tax rate increase of 5.95 that year, so I'm guessing it was probably fiscal 9. 
um, I honestly just think that that underscores my point from before, where um, if, if I saw the school board coming in with what I felt was a, an unreasonable number, an outlandish number, a number that was um, based on um, budget requests for um, programs and services that were so far above and beyond you know, what was needed, I would completely agree with you. Were I on the council back in 2009, I, I'm sure I would have agreed with that. Um, I just don't see that as being the case this year. Um, having also attended that March 7th uh, workshop where the school superintendent listened to um, the uh, rationales that were delivered from department heads, building um, principals and things like that, um, I, don't, I don't think the way the process works, I don't, I don't think, um, and I see Dr. Colton in the back, I, I don't think that um, the intent uh, was that the March 7th draft budget were, you know, was to be final. And I also have faith that um, uh, those additional items of which it, I guess, rounds up to about $196,000, if I'm doing the math correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, we're deemed to be priorities. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think that um, that exercise would have been undertaken on March 7th uh, simply as a means of pacifying um, folks that were, um, you know, just pushing to add more, um, uh, more fat to the budget. Um, you know, what I heard a lot of in that March 7th workshop when I was there was discussion around um, things like gifted and talented programs, where even with this budget, we're, we're still not fully funding a gifted and talented program in the way that many of our other peer communities are. Um, adding ed techs to certain buildings that even, even at that, we're, you know, just barely coming up to par with other communities. What I keep looking back at is the point I made earlier, whether it be the per-pupil spending, whether it be the, the amount of increases that are happening in other towns, um, I don't see any of these things being out of line with what's happening um, sort of across the, the region. And, um, you know, um, I do have, I, I, I don't, no, I won't, I won't never mind. Um, so in any case, I, I guess the, the final point I'd make is that um, I understand the uh, fact that number one, um, as counselors we represent the entire community. Um, we certainly heard from people at the public hearing last week, we've heard from many other people uh, you know, in the course of emails submitted to the council, of which I take, I don't know if others do as well, but I take uh, all forms of comment through whichever channel they're delivered to be of equal importance, um, whether somebody stands here in the chamber at a public hearing or they send us an email. Um, so I think we've heard from, you know, a lot of different people on this issue. I understand very clearly the, the issue of some people in this community having more means than others. Um, I'm someone who, uh, in the last year and a half, has spent uh, portions of, of that period unemployed twice. Um, I've, I've collected unemployment in that time. Um, I don't take for granted um, the, the good fortunes that we have in this community because I've certainly, in the very recent past, experienced the not so good times. Um, and for me, you know, increases of any kind have real meaning. I don't take them lightly. Um, they impact me. Uh, certainly have in the past year and a half, I'll tell you that, a lot more than they have. It doesn't change how I value um, and how I think many in the community and many of the people that, um, you know, have asked us to represent their views here. It doesn't change how I think um, uh, people place value on, 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 on what is provided in this community. So, um, anyway, I'll leave that at that. Any other discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion on the floor for a budget allocation in the amount of $24,682,945 with the amendment to Clause 7 to reflect a 50-50 split of any excess dollars received from the state, 50% uh, going to uh, the school's unassigned fund balance and 50% to the reduction of property taxes uh, with the modification of the clause that the school department may curtail spending to offset any shortfall. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Councilor Jordan. This has happened multiple times in the past. 
Um, and I think that people who send them, their intentions are good. Their intentions are good. You know, I want to support the budget. Oh my gosh, I've heard the council might go down the number. I want to support the budget. And they copy and paste. Come on. You know, if you have your own opinion, let's hear it. But let's not do the copy and paste. So, yeah, uh, I'm a little um, uh, not so nice about that. But I, I guess I'm just saying, so if you have something to say, say it. Don't do the copy and paste. And it wasn't just today. Um, I've seen it over the last 14 years several times. In fact, one time it was really interesting about, oh, lots and lots and lots of them, word for word. I want to hear what you have to say. I'm interested, but don't do copy and paste. So I'm interested in comments when I see a copy and paste. Um, I really don't pay a lot of attention because I know it came from somebody else. So um, I don't know. I know we're in a deadlock. Um, Obviously, somebody has to jump off the wagon here. Um, I feel that I compromise where I want to be in hopes that if I went up a little, some counselors might go down a little, and maybe we could get at least four votes or something. Um, but I will, I will not vote for the school board's budget. Um, so, thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Jordan? I understand what Councilor Ray is saying. You went up a little thinking that we would come down a little bit. Again, we're just randomly picking a number that we might not need to. And I understand that you're saying that the vote, the number that goes to the vote is generally approved, but maybe that's because it's generally supported. I mean, it wasn't approved that one year. Obviously, people had an opinion that year. We have created more awareness around this budget just tonight. Unfortunately, it's not being aired, so we're going to have to talk it up, and people are going to have to spread the word. But the whole point is to send this to the vote, and if people don't like the number, then we can come back and do what you're suggesting, pick the new number. Other discussion? I'll say, we, we're going to sit here all evening, and um, this is a, like I said already, this is a very challenging evening for me because um, I, I really, I really believe that um, we need to do something to start to uh, contain costs in every town. Um, I do support what Caitlin says, and that um, if we send this to the voters, but people need to get out and vote. Because uh, there, are, I know there are, are people who stay away from the polls because they don't think their vote is going to count. But if you don't get out there and vote, of course it's not going to be counted because it won't be there. Um, but I will say that um, um, when Sarah told me that she, she wasn't going to, that she was going to be taking a hiatus from the council, I said, you put me in the position of a swing vote and that isn't where I wanted to sit. Um, but that's where I'm sitting because I am probably of the ilk that I would say, um, send this to the voters. I'm a, I'm a business owner. I believe in um, uh, containing costs, reallocating resources, all of those things that I would, uh, I would ask be done. Um, but at this point, we're going to sit here all evening, and we're just going to go back and forth. Um, and so I'm going to be the swing vote. Other discussion? I'm sorry. Would you repeat the motion? Right now it's a picture of my motion. This is a city to move the school budget from 24 million 87901 uh, would be a number. And the 
content and still keeping the 100 percent language where if they receive greater than they anticipated that 100 percent of that amount would be used to reduce taxes. And then finally, uh, switching the shells in May and the last uh, the last sentence of that part. Uh, one question I had, Councilor Gordon, was uh, under number one on that of 76, uh, where would you like to take that all our All of their expenditures. All of their expenditures. Okay, so that would adjust that to $62,108. I just want to make sure you allocate that dollar in an appropriate spot. Any other discussion? Um, Councilor Wood, thank you for your words. Um, if there's no other discussion, uh, call a question. All those in favor of the motion on the table allocate uh, funds in the amount of $24,879,013 with 100 percent, well, that's as worded, and uh, change to the Clause 7 to reflect the language of May. All those in favor? Opposed? The measure passes. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is item number 77-2017, approval of the Cumberland County Assessment. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Councilor Jordan, any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Item number 78-2017, approval of the local homestead exemption funds. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Councilor Jordan, is there a second? A second. Councilor Grennan, any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Item number 79-2017, property tax levy limit. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Can you read the whole motion, please? Uh, by order to take with the town health in accordance with Title 30 AMRSA, Section 5721 A, not be able to hereby increase the property tax levy limit for municipal services to the $7,246,929. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Jordan, any discussion? All those in favor? Number 80-2017, a proposed fiscal year 2018 general fund budget summary motion. Motion to approve, Councilor Garrett. Um, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the only point I would say is I would make the adjustments accordingly to have on, on this grid to reflect the changes that the Council made this evening. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, I'll move it. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Councilor Sullivan, opposed? And that concludes our budget motions. Um, last item on the agenda for tonight is number 91. 91-2017, recommendation from the Appointments Committee to fill the Fort William Park vacancy. Um, is there somebody representing the Appointments Committee tonight, seeing as the chair of the Appointments Committee is mm -hmm. not here? Councilor Sullivan? Yes, uh, uh, Councilor Penny Gordon and I met last week and uh, interviewed three Atlantic citizens for the vacancy in Fort William Park Committee. We are the public clerk and the attorney. Um, I want to thank all three uh, applicants who uh, took their time to come and meet with us and express their interest in serving the town. And as always, we are so fortunate to have your citizens. And it was not an easy decision. But we're pleased to um, nominate you. Thank you. Is there a second? Second that. Councilor Jordan, any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. 
Is there anybody remaining that wishes to speak? That concludes our regular agenda. Is there anybody remaining that wishes to speak to anything non agenda? Mm -hmm. so motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Jordan, second. Second. Councilor Jordan, all in favor? Thank you very much. Good night. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I've got a note here. CNAT. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to take a little bit of time just to cut and paste that. Uh, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem. We'll get it. Mm -hmm. well, what I'll, I'll do too. Uh, mm -hmm. What I'll just do too, Jamie, is get these done as soon as I kind of post them as okay. nice grab online if people want to at least see because we don't have a video and okay. so okay. you know I'm sure Wendy will be writing an article yes. but um, so okay I guess. I'm sure it's oh yeah it's not like that oops